I'm Jeff Cannon. I'm a forest landscape ecologist at the Jones Center. And uh, we're out here today looking at some hurricane research. And so about two years ago, Hurricane Michael came through this area and downed about 20% of the trees on the property. And so hurricanes can represent a huge loss to foresters. And so we're looking at doing some research to try to mitigate that and try to help them find some strategies for making their forests more resistant to wind. And so one of the ways that we're doing that is, um, is looking at longleaf pine. And, and longleaf pine is a really important and rare species, tends to have higher wind resistance, higher drought resistance, and it can withstand uh, relatively hot fires, which um, all these things we're expecting to see more of with climate change. And so one of the things that we're trying to do here is actually quantify and measure how much more wind resistant is longleaf pine. And so we're doing that with some winching experiments. And so we're climbing about 30 feet high in the trees, attaching some rigging and attaching that all to a really giant electric winch. And then we're measuring how much torque it takes to pull down trees of different sizes. And the hope from this research is to compare a lot of different species, a lot of different soil types, so that when foresters are trying to make decisions on how to manage their land, um, they have some information to base on, you know, what species might be the most wind resistant, how might they do planting, changing densities, or maybe planting hedgerows, like what's the best way to deal with some of the increased risk from wind damage. So the winching tells us a lot about the strength of an individual tree trunk and the roots and how it interacts with the soil, but another huge part of wind risk is the actual crown. So the crown is this giant sail that's on top of the tree, and depending on the architecture, the size of the crown, where it's oriented, how porous it is can uh, change wind risk a lot. And so one of the things we're doing is using um, LIDAR, terrestrial LIDAR, which gives us really high resolution imagery of crowns so we can look at their architecture, we can look at their size and volume, and then we can look at things how their position in a, in a forest stand changes the crowns and how that influences wind damage. One of the things that we're hoping to gain from doing this research is um, try to develop some best practices to help managers better mitigate wind damage. And so it's really difficult to study wind, but we plan on doing some work looking at how wind actually moves through forest. How does tree density change how wind moves through there? How do the crown structure change uh, how wind moves? And then how do those factors kind of stack up to make trees more or less vulnerable? So in the end, what we think we'll be able to say something about is you know, how the vulnerability of a stand changes over the lifetime of a forest. So a forester can kind of know, uh, so almost from an insurance perspective, how much risk they're taking by letting their trees grow for a longer time. So the Jones Center is a really amazing place to work. It's a you know, 30,000 acre playground for research. And even though it's sort of a remote place, it's really busy with students. Um, I think they're somewhere between like 30 to 40 students right now. And kind of helping students get engaged and start on their projects is one of the most rewarding parts of the, of the job here. I've been at Itchaway since May 2020, right after the pandemic started. Um, I originally heard about Itchaway when I was doing my undergrad at the University of Florida, studying forestry at the University of Florida. This is kind of the ecosystem that we're accustomed to. So I just, you know when you come across great management and you see it here.